So I'm pretty sure uh, I've uh, I've used this before, uh, one or one or twice, uh, one or one or two times. Um, I remember using it for uh, selecting these crystals for the uh, uh, f for this uh, transceiver, and uh, just sending them to a uh, oscillating them and sending them to a frequency counter to figure out what their fu the fundamental frequencies were. But I used this box here, so I thought today I'd show you what's inside this box. Uh, it is just a simple Colpitz oscillator, and I'll explain what a Colpitz oscillator is. Uh, but basically, um, you apply 12 volts. Um, the crystal uh, fits on this little socket right here, um, and uh, the oscillating signal comes on the out. So you hook that up to your uh, frequency counter. So let's already loosen the uh, screws on this. Let's open it up. So uh, this is what's inside. Let's see if we can zoom in. That's all I can zoom. Uh, so uh, there's obviously uh, two transistors and some other components. Um, you can kind of see the uh, uh, connector here for the crystal. It's just a three-pin uh, connector. Uh, two of them are shorted together and go. They go to ground. And then the other one comes here into the uh, into the circuit. Uh, it's constructed on a um, a bare PC board in a particular fashion. Um, let me um, I know I've got an example of that. Let, let me uh, let me find something just a second. All right. Um, so I found these on eBay. These are hole saws um, of a particular type. I believe these are five millimeter diameter. You can get them in different sizes. Um, but what they are, they're just they're just a tube and then they are dipped in diamond uh, compound. So they end up being uh, abrasive in a round shape and you can put them in a drill press and you can uh, drill uh, little tiny holes and into a PC board and you create isolated pads uh, so you don't want to drill all the way through um, you want to drill just through the copper layer leave the uh, FR4 in place and then you end up with this little pad of copper that you can solder to so uh, uh, hopefully camera will focus on this there we go so these end up being three little three little circular pads and then you can solder things on like this transistor and uh, so you can create these little isolated pads they're not, they're uh, they're pretty nice um, so that's how how this construction was done um, got a lifetime supply of these things now where they came two four six yeah they came to ten to a package and they were really cheap <laughs> um, so they're they're a, a good deal um, I think uh, definitely a definitely a lifetime supply. I've seen other people use little hole saws that have little jagged teeth. Um, I've found those and I've used those before. They tend to grab in the PC board and they'll spin it, which is not good. And then they'll also have a tendency to not do anything, not do anything, and then bite hard and then cut too far. Whereas these ones that just do grinding, they're not actually uh, cutting, they're just grinding, uh, seem to be much easier much easier to control. So, anyway, a tip there. Um, so what I've done is uh, I've kind of, you know, started out and I figured out where things want to be and then I'll, uh, like here, I know this transistor will be here, so I ground three, three little pads in a triangle and then I know that I have to go a resistor over and then three other pads here for another transistor, so I just put down a bunch of transistors. You don't have to grind anything for ground because ground is just this top layer of copper. Um, so uh, it's kind of a nice way to uh, construct things. So let's take a look at the schematic for this thing. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see that. All right. So, um. So these are the two transistors. I'm using two N2222s. You could use a 3904 or any other thing, probably. Um, so this particular 
transistor here is the oscillator, and then the second uh, transistor is just an emitter, fo emitter follower. So let's just take a look at that since it's easy. Um, this signal goes through this 1K, it goes through the 2 and 2, 2, 2. Uh, whatever signal here is on the base ends up being here on the emitter, and then it comes out and it's uh, passively coupled. Um, so that's easy. 1K, 1K, a transistor. Um, the uh, voltage coming into the uh, box goes through 100 ohms and 0 0.01 microfarads. So just a little, uh, just a little filtering. Um, and then this is the Colpitz oscillator. Um, one of the easy ways to see if it's a Colpitz or not is these two capacitors. There'll always be two capacitors um, in in this oscillator. So there's a feedback uh, feedback here to the uh, uh, from the emitter back to the base, and then one down here to ground. Um, so it's a very simple circuit. It's very symmetric. 10K, 10K, and 470 picofarads and 470 picofarads. Um, and then the uh, uh, crystal under test uh, just goes into the circuit and to ground. Um, and that's it. So uh, it's a nice little circuit, easy to build. Um, I've used it so many times now. It's just a handy thing, uh, handy thing to have. Um, yeah. There it is. Uh, I found just a little box left over from some other product. I always save the save the little boxes to put other things in. Uh, it's just uh, it's not even glued down. It's just kind of sitting in there. And um, let's see if I can show you the bottom. I don't think the bottom is very exciting. Yeah, bottom's just, bottom's just a PC board. So that's it. There you go. I recommend you. Uh, I recommend you go build one. Okay, I'm sure somebody wants to uh, see this thing run. So uh, here we go. This is uh, a uh, BNC that's going to go over here to my uh, to the input of an oscilloscope. So let's hook that up to the output. Um, this is uh, 12 volts. So it is now running and. Uh, this is a crystal of, let's say, unknown frequency. Um, here's the little, here's the little uh, connector. So we'll pop that on there, and uh, go up to our oscilloscope. And whoa, it is oscillating. So uh, let's reduce the amplitude here. So the shape of the uh, waveform isn't important. Um, you just need to be able to have the thing free run and measure its frequency. Um, so this waveform is fine. And we can push the uh, frequency button here. And it says we've got, uh, it's kind of fluctuating between 5.99 and 6.02. Um, let's see, the Rigel has a frequency counter built in. So we will turn that on. And it says it's measuring 5.9995. So it must be a 6 megahertz crystal. And it's a 6 megahertz printed on the crystal. So, um, yeah. So there you go. Um, nice thing for the shop.